welcome to hell, the sign says. At the entrance to the capital on the outskirts of the city, they're hunkering down and preparing to fight with all their might. But they're taking every precaution, and they've asked us to keep the location here secret and protect their identities. What do you have to do, do you think? Should. Just should. Should, should, should. Mm. And protect my home. That's all. It's easy. Mm. All around the city, they are building defences. They've seen the pummeling of other cities, and with a 40-mile convoy of Russian military hardware sitting on the edge of the capital, they believe they're next. There are several warnings of mines ahead. The streets are scattered with scrap metal spikes and tyres. And huge metal anti-tank hedgehogs, anything to slow the advance of the Russian troops. There's frenetic activity inside the dozens of civil defence stations, where every room is piled high with donations. There's a water supply, food. Yes, water. Mm -hmm. Water, food, sleeping mats. Yes, yeah. Soldiers and civilians are working in unison. These are the ones who've opted to stay behind whatever happens. These people ran businesses, had careers just over a week ago. Their lives now put on hold and almost certainly changed forever. But with time running out, we were told over and over again how much they needed tougher international action. Nobody knows what Putin can do today or even tomorrow. And we need actions right now, not next week or next month. It, uh, it, it will not work. So we need actions yesterday. This is what they're preparing to take on, Russian military hardware and soldiers all edging ever closer to the capital. These pictures were released by the Russian Defense Ministry, purporting to show their troops entering the Kiev region. The videos come after US defense officials claimed, without providing any evidence, that they believe the convoy had stalled and was having logistical issues. The capital civilians believe it's only a matter of time, but insist they're ready. I can't explain you what the feelings of our Ukrainians in here is. Because everyone has relatives, has their loved ones who are under fire right now, or who, who was wounded right now, or who was killed right now. It's, it's, it's impossible to explain to people who don't live in, a such, in a such of despair. But this despair, it's not despair, oh, we are surrendered. No, it's despair, we will win. We will go, we will, we will fight you back to hell, where your place is. Many of these people hadn't picked up a weapon over a week ago and now barely flinch at the sounds of war. Uh, nine days ago, I was a teacher about the makeup and uh, I had to, I worked with students and showed them how to make the makeup and uh, everything was very peaceful. Does that yeah. worry you hearing sounds like it's that? Okay. Are you scared? Already, it's normal for me already. It's normal life. Your life has changed so yeah, much. It's just like no fear. I'm like, I don't feel anything inside already. Her friend is a graduate in biochemistry and is still studying her master's. No purpose for this. So why do they do this? I want to fight also because this is my country, this is my home. Um, my thoughts, my family, all of my, I don't know, pressures, no, everything is here. And I, I would like to, to, to be this, like the, that way it was before. Taking Ukraine's capital remains the Russian prize, and the people here know that. Alex Crawford, Sky News, Kiev.